Are you a tattooist? Are you sick and tired of working every day and just not making enough money? Do you want to be a millionaire? Then watch this video right now, because we'll tell you five ways to become a millionaire in a week. Welcome to That Tattoo Show, a weekly YouTube chat show and podcast in a magazine format. It combines feature conversations, how-to guides and personal stories into about 45 minutes of solution-based entertainment for tattooists of all levels. Streaming everywhere, every Sunday. I'm Paul. And I'm Chris. <laughs> An email the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, from another, and I get loads of these. And Was it one of those ones? It's like uh, you've got like fucking. I'm I'm from Uganda and no, the, no, the this prince was one, has given you a million. No, pounds. no, this was very lucky. I was very fortunate. I was selected, pre-selected to be part of a life-changing event for the tattoo community, um, and uh, I'm gonna. The guy's gonna share with me five ways to become a millionaire tattooist. Five ways. Yeah, I, mean, I already am, so it's fucking waste of an email. But, um, so he's got five ways. His proven strategy, that this is what I'm going to do. And when I went and had a look at it, it was basically uh, use a digital calendar, uh, be nice to your clients, decorate your shop, uh, and, you know, sell at, sell an aftercare range. Um, as usual. Fucking So dear. what we're talking about today is... Um, that uh, and the my you know one of my ongoing fears with some stuff that's happening in the industry it will become plainly obvious to you as we go through this that we are in fact taking the piss so hopefully this will just give you a bit of a laugh but also on a serious note it gives some stuff to look out for and don't fall for these uh these tips <laughs> one don't learn to tattoo you don't need to do that at all if you need to have any pretend pictures of your illustrious tattoo career, just go on to Mid Journey, generate a bunch of them, bung them on an Instagram. Nobody's going to check, and you then you can just tell yeah. people that you're a world famous, award winning um, survivor fully, fully of some kind up. of apocalyptic event in your life, and you've you've risen from the underground and you've strived against everything. I'm the underdog, and I've made it, and, and these are the secrets to my life. It's like, yeah, whatever. Um, so the first thing that you do, after you've not learned to tattoo and you've just faked all of that, because you don't want to waste your time with all that because you don't yeah. want to actually be able to do the job. I mean, that's, that's just rubbish. Just say you can. What you need is a tattoo brand. Normally, what I would advise is that you learn a bit about brand building, marketing strategy, learn a bit about business. Forget all of that. You don't need to worry about any of that at all, right? Just use fucking... Go to ChatGPT, ask it to generate all the text for a website for your new tattoo brand. Uh, then you're going to need... And the marketing a, strategy as well. All the marketing Everything. strategies there. Go to someone that's in, like Mid Journey or um, Dali or something like that and just put in tattoo logo. Pick a name that is sort of slightly religious. I don't know, something, you know, sacrosanct or something like that. You know, pick a name. It means <laughs> that you can use all this kind of like Illuminati graphics and everything. Get Mid Journey to make yeah. that for you. Because you, you don't want to waste you, time you, you learning graphic five, design or anything favor, like sir. that. You, if you want to spend a bit of money, go on favour. No, we're not spending any money. No money. Don't spend any money, right, at all. All of this can be done for free. You don't need to, and you can do this from the comfort of your own bedroom. You don't even need to get out of bed. Don't put any effort into this because, like, we don't want to actually do anything, right? Two. Now that you've got this brand, this brand's got to sell something. Don't spend any money, right? What you do is you drop ship everything. Right? So to allow 28 days for delivery, write it really, really small on the bottom of the website so nobody can read it, but then you've got yourself covered. <laughs> and like, never so send it to you. Next day delivery available, but then when they actually pay the money, you go, well, well it'll turn up sometime this year, right? When we White say. label everything. Like Chinese Dave will put your AI logo on it, no extra charge, you put it all on the boxes. You can do all the graphics in mid journey, that, that'll do it. Chat GPT will write all the text. Don't bother doing anything like that. Now you've got a big brand and you want to hype the death out of it. So you, like, you just want to get on Instagram, get yourself a pro team. Don't pick anybody any good. Pick all the crap people that are desperate for sponsorships and tell them that they can be elite team. Don't say pro team because that's not big enough these days. Get that all built up the, and they'll do all the, the marketing for you. The unobtainium team. The unobtainium team. They'll just market all that shit for you. Just get them. That's a really good name for And like sign up 
about 400 artists and they'll just shout about your brand and then you get all these people yeah. you drop ship it to them brands good right so you're all set so now you're or a you success get, story you can get a load of big name artists right to sit there and make videos over themselves talking about how great your product is yeah your next thing is open a chain of shops. Open five shops immediately. You've got the name of the brand, so keep that for the name of the shop. So it could be Sacrosanct Tattoo, and you can be the CEO of it. Um, just get a load of like people in there. Use your own products in there. Take like 70% off of them. Best thing to do, because you don't want to spend any time doing any market research or anything like that. So just open up next door to a good shop and just do your tattoos cheaper, right? In fact, what you could do, like go onto Google and put in the search term that you want. So find the shop that's doing really well in the town you want to open and pay to have an advert put up every time anybody searches that. So, and then everybody will be confused and go there. And then when they go, oh, I was looking for Dave, who does the dragon tattoos, go, yeah, he works here now. And when they get in, say, oh, Dave's not here today, and just get one of the one of the people that you've got there doing it. Let them all be apprentices for a couple of days at least. Maybe may, right. maybe have a go on a bit of practice skin. But three, make them buy days. the practice skin off you. Don't be um don't be giving them nothing no, for you free. No, you gotta charge them to for the apprenticeship as well. Well it's three grand three grand a week. You know, yeah. have them apprentice for two weeks, you got six K in the bank, get them making you some money. Four. Oh, you know what you need next, though, What's isn't next? Before What's you next? move on to that, what you need to do is you need to set up a tattoo magazine. And that tattoo magazine is invite only, but people have to pay to have their features put in there. When you buy it for a thousand pound a page. Yeah, you've got to pay for the feature, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you pay yeah. for your feature. What I would prefer to do is create a fake award online Oof. so that everybody can pay three four hundred pounds to enter your fake awards you don't that's have to, a good one actually you don't have to do any trophies yeah uh, no but this is the thing though if you have the magazine right and then you can create the award you legitimize the, the award by having it sponsored oh you by can have the a magazine. sponsored by the magazine so, exactly. so you can do that get an and award by winning going. the award you get to have your fucking feature in the magazine there you go, and you can pay £600 to be featured. <sighs> You've been invited to be featured, it only costs £600. You've won the award, well done. You, get so you want to get an award, this is, a, you can get ChatGPT to do all the words for this, for you, build a website for and it. the other thing as well with the magazine, sorry to interrupt you, is right. like by having the magazine, you have the Instagram page, what you can do is you can share people's posts for a small fee. Supplemental income. Supplemental income, you see. Now this is where the money starts really rolling in. What you want to do now is set up a tattoo school. Oof. Right? Everybody who goes to tattoo school just has to them, buy one of your machines. Has to have to buy the machines. They have to use, they have to buy all of your tattoo supplies to use during the course. Mm -hmm. Then when they leave, you put them in your shop charge them another £6,000 to get them professional. So you sell them the basics course and go, well, you've only paid for the basics course, so you'll have to do the six grand light, super duper lining course oh. to get them in there. Then you've got to do the fine line course. Then you've got to do the fine line course and all that sort of stuff. Now, mate, I haven't even touched on next year when you branch out into permanent makeup. Ooh. Right, so once the school's going, uh, you, you, you're coining it now. Now, now we're sort of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing is, you're a massive success now. You're the underdog success story. You have risen. Oh. Now, the thing is, what you want to do now, you want to tell people how awesome you are. It can't just be about your brand. It's got to be about you now. You've got to be famous. You've got to be pulling that Ferrari up outside some big buildings and telling people for hours with a PowerPoint presentation about how great you are. Because it's all about you. It's yeah. all about you. So you've got to become a life coach. Once you become a life coach, all these people are going to be hanging on every word, right? So now what you want to become? Business consultants. Oof. Big, big money in consultancy here now. This means you just go to a load of tattoo shops and you tell them everything they're doing wrong. Don't tell them quite everything. Charge them a little bit extra for that. Well, yeah. It's different tiers, isn't it? It's like, you know, tier one, tier two, tier three. And by that point, you won't have a soul anymore, but you don't really care about that, do you? Would you be a millionaire? But you will be a millionaire. Welcome to being a tattooed millionaire. And I hope that was entertaining for you. It's actually slightly sad for us because actually that's what's going on in the world of tattooing right now. What's the chances, right? That some has fucking watched this now and in a couple of months' time, it's, it's just like written it all down. The only way to combat any of this stuff and these this influx of dickheads that are rolling into the tattoo industry is for you to see what's going on, see what they're playing at, and don't support their products.
you make your choices for yourself. I can't tell you not who not to buy from and all that sort of stuff because actually it's illegal. But I what I can, you can no, I can't. No, it's good on economic tours. Um, it's it, it is um, illegal. But what I can tell you is look out for some of what I think are the warning signs. If you look at a tattoo distributor and every one of their products is clearly white labelled from China. You, like, you've got to ask yourself the question. If they're selling unethically, if they're selling unethical products... Counterfeit machines. Counterfeit machines, um, you know, all these kind of products, you know, then you've got to ask yourself that question. If they've got a protein for products that just don't need, like protein for tongue depressors or something, you know, then you know but what they But they are doing. the fucking best tongue depressors in the world they, they, they still they're they all game like changers an extra dip in the bottom they should fuck it they're not even called tongue depressors they're called fucking glide spoons glide spoons I hope that that is a cautionary tale for you guys out there and uh, our sense of humour will at least serve to make you think about these things you know about where you get your supplies from the kind of people that you're supporting a bit like what we said to you about the counterfeits and the fakes yeah okay you might be saving a bit of money but look at whose pockets you're putting that money into and the damage that they're doing because the, the more success they have the more of them turn up and the worse it gets we have to start taking charge and individual responsibility for all the stuff that we do, unfortunately. And, you know, when you go into shaky wakey tattoo supply, it's just like, what's the point? Just message Chinese Dave. But just be aware, if you do that, anything- You are an you, importer. You're the importer, so anything goes tits up, it's all so on it's you. It's all on you, you know what I mean? My honest advice would be stick to good brands, you know what I mean? But, you know, I get it, we're all trying to save a few quid here. But the more you we do this, the more we patronise these people, the more money we give them, the, the longer they'll be in this industry. And there, w there will not be an industry left if we don't stop doing it. You know, they can save some money. Use our fucking discount codes. Hey, yeah, you could. Get some good products off the people we've we got discount codes we just from. got a new one as well. I, I had a chat with... Um, Larry from Easy, yeah, and he's sorted us out a discount code for everybody, so Which it's will in, be in the description, description of the video. As are a lot of other discount codes in the description of the video. Uh, we try and get as many of those as we can to save you a few quid, and it supports us as well. Um, but if you see any of that stuff that we've been taking the piss out of, um, you know, just be aware that there's a dark underbelly underneath all of that, and it's not about tattooing, it's about profit, and that's all yeah. these people care about, right? Back to either me or me him in the studio. Now, for most of us, that will have caused us to raise our eyebrows and chuckle a little bit. And for those of you that don't know about the kind of things that go on in the industry, that should serve as a bit of a warning for things to look out for as you make your way through this industry. And it should serve to remind all of us, I guess, of the kind of things that are happening not just in our industry, but in the world, as the world, you know, moves forward with hustle culture and everybody's kind of desperate need to use the internet and AI to make money in any way, shape or form, then we all have to be more careful, don't we? Uh, and look out for these kind of bad actors and their behaviour, because it really is no different in many, many industries. I guess, you know, the one thing that's worth pointing out is that during that piece that you've just watched, everything that I made, every graphic that was on screen, was made using a trial version of the very first results of a Google search for AI image generator. Now, I don't really use AI, and I don't really know how the prompts work properly, and I wasn't really trying that hard at all to make anything particularly any good. And yet, with almost no effort whatsoever, I mean, I literally did that while I was editing that piece, I've managed to make some, I mean, albeit for terrible typos, some reasonably believable pieces that could be used to pull the wool over your eyes. And what I would say to you is, you know, that took me less than 10 minutes to put all of those images together because it wasn't, you know, really my intention to pass them off. I, you know, I, I wanted them to be clearly AI for the comedy effect. But imagine if I spent an hour and my motivation was to deceive you and make you believe that stuff. I think it's fair to assume that I could make some pretty decent deep fakes of that stuff, uh, particularly if you combine it with some Photoshop skills and, you know, and all of that stuff and a, 
you know, that kind of motivation to make money at all costs. So I do really think that we should all be looking at it as a bit of a warning of how easy it is for, you know, unscrupulous people to deceive us and make themselves seem like they're more important than what they are and that their qualifications are in fact real when they could be completely and utterly fake. I mean, you guys probably already know this, but I do think it serves to remind us all that just because somebody's saying that they're an expert and that they've got all these qualifications and expertise, that it might be worth checking that they actually have first, you know, because anybody with all of that stuff. You should be able to find that information about them on the internet, you know. Just be a little bit careful about that stuff. You might be thinking at this point, well, that's all very well and good, Paul, but how do I avoid this stuff? And I guess that's kind of the part of the mission of this channel, if you like, is to warn you about these things and the stuff that's going on. Talk about some of the stuff that's not the easiest stuff to talk about, I don't think, because, you know, you're kind of shining a light on the dark corners of the industry. You know, and it would be a lot easier if we could sit here and talk about how amazing everything was all the time. But the truth of it is, it's not always amazing. You know, sometimes it's a bit rubbish. So how can you protect yourself from this sort of stuff? Well, the simplest answer is to do it all yourself and use the tools available to you to not have to rely on these sort of people. If you're doing it all for yourself, you can't get scammed. And if you start looking at things like websites and learning about how they're built, learning about photography, learning about marketing, and then doing those things, when you get these emails from people telling you that they can do all this for you, you can, well, for one, you'll be somewhat knowledgeable about it enough to know that that's a load of nonsense. And also, you'll be able to just delete it, knowing that you know how to do it for yourself. And you'll know when people are experts and know better about it, because if you inform yourself, then you'll know more, right? And I think we need to start thinking about these technologies that exist, you know, kind of outside of our art form, that are not tattoo machines, that are not needles, they're not ink. We need to start thinking about these things as tools that we use in our job, that, you know, a camera, a microphone. I mean, just in the same way that your iPad is you know, a replacement for paper, but your iPad is capable of editing your own reels. It's capable of building your own website for you. It's capable of making that website visible in search engines. And all of these things are things that you could do very simply for yourself using the same tools that are being used to scam you. And you're not going to scam yourself, right? So I always think that knowledge is power, right? So if you learn about it yourself and think of it as a skill set that you need to acquire, then you'll be safer moving forward and you'll be less likely to get ripped off by, you know, these kind of unscrupulous bad actors. I guess the other great thing about that is if you're doing it, you can take control of how your work is presented and you don't have to present it the same as everybody else. You can present it how you like it. You know, if you want to film all of your reels on a 1980s video camera because that suits your aesthetic, you're much better off doing that yourself than getting somebody who says they can to come in and do it for you, right? You know, it's it's about, I guess, seeing the art of tattooing now as it's not just the actual, the drawing and then the tattoo itself, but also how it is then presented on the internet and to everybody for the purpose of letting them know that you do good tattoos, right? I think we need to start looking at the tools as part of a complete toolkit. And so what's coming up next is the kind of beginning of that, for us really as a channel, looking at tools that myself and Chris both think the modern day tattooist needs to start thinking about using. I'm going to do a few of these kind of things, you know, on the more kind of uh, website marketing side of things, because that's more my field of expertise. And Chris, because he's a massive fan of, you know, the other gear that we use, like the video editing software and, and you know, cameras and stuff. Because, you know, the same camera that can be used to take brilliant photographs of your tattoo for your portfolio can also be used to film your reels and all that sort of stuff. And so what's coming up is the first of those. And Chris is going to do a review of what he thinks is a great camera for tattooists. The first of a few things like this. If you want to see more of them, then just hit either me or Chris up in the comments down below and we'll bring you some stuff. We're going to keep looking out for, you know, tools, maybe a little bit outside of the world of tattooing that you can use that will make all of this make a bit more sense and make it a little bit easier for you to navigate this weird world that we uh, find ourselves living at the moment and avoid getting ripped off and scammed. And so, unfortunately, with that, uh, you know what this means, don't you? <laughs> Chris. Yo. 
we are content creators now. We are not just tattooists. Most tattoo artists now have Instagrams. They make reels because that's the algorithm. And you've got to do the algorithm stuff. A lot of people like ourselves have started podcasts, YouTube channels. And when you do that, you know, you want to level yourself up. And you don't want to do kind of like what we've done where we've got a camera for everything that we need. So like, like I've got multiple cameras. I've got cinema camera, which is for the podcast. I've got the A7S3. And the good thing about those is they're really good for video. They've got a 12 megapixel sensor. Low light capability is awesome. But the downside for somebody like myself that is one thing a or even someone like yourself if you're watching this where you want a camera that can do everything you know you want to take photos you want to do a video and you want it to be good quality is when you're using something like an a7s3 they're great for video not so good for photography because they've got a 12 megapixel sensor however when it comes to social media it, it, 12 megapixels is probably fine if the lighting is right and they'll do the job but if you want to have something that you can use to take pictures of your reference. You want you want to print your pictures on banners and you want to do a lot more with your photographs. Then you do need something a little bit better. So when I was kind of shopping around and having a look and speaking to my friends down at Camera Centre UK, because I tattoo a lot of the guys that work there and they're very, very knowledgeable. They put me on to the A7C Mark II. And you're probably thinking like, why should I choose the A7C Mark II over another camera? Let me just take the lens off. It is a full frame camera and it is quite small. It's a, a really nice compact full frame camera. It's got a 33 megapixel sensor and that's paired with the their Bion ZXR processor. It's also got an advanced five axis in body stabilization and it also has active stabilization, which is like a digital form of stabilization as well, which is really good for taking photographs if you are in low light situations because you're going to have longer exposure or whatever it helps with little micro jitters and it also really does help with you know doing handheld shots having that active stabilization helps smooth things out like a lot of the videos i do let me just put that on i feel a bit uncomfortable with it being off a lot of the videos that i do is mostly handheld unless it's like this which on a tripod time to time i do use the gimbal but a lot of my shots are handheld and i'm only able to do that because of the active stabilization in the Sony cameras. Another great thing about these is they've got so many different picture profiles you can have and, and you can customize them as well. So you can have various different looks. For me, I love the S Cine Tone picture profile. I think that is just got a nice look to it. And also for, for me, from when we film, I'm able to have three Sony cameras all with the same picture profile, which helps obviously with matching up the picture when you film it. But as just a standalone content creator doing my job as a tattooist, you know, this is definitely something that I was looking for. I wanted something that I was able to take really good pictures with. I wanted something that I was able to do video with, something that was small, compact, easy to carry around. And this does tick all the boxes. So some of the other features of this camera are 4K 60p. So if you want to get rid of a slow mobile vibe, works really well when you're doing product shots so if you just want to make things look cool get that cinematic look as they always say you can do that 60 frames per second in 4k but you will also do 120 frames per second in full hd but when you're tattooing and you want to get some cool little shots of your machine running you know you can do that with this and you can help enhance your reels with you no know, really nice extra added footage so the the sony a7c mark ii also records at 10 bit 422 and it also has like i said the picture profile so you have the s cinetone which is really really nice and you have s log as well so if you want to film it in a log profile which is nice and flat which gives you a wider dynamic range you can do that and it and then you can just kind of put your own LUTs on it or you can if you're like me and you like to dabble in color grading you can do that if you want to but if you want to get stuff just straight out of camera, s Tone is lovely and it does give you a little bit of leeway if you want to do, you know, a little bit of adjustments color-wise, which we do on the podcast. But I think for, for video, it works really well. Now, I have been testing this camera. I first tried it out. I went out with um, Stuart, who does the podcast and the YouTube channel for Camera Centre UK. I went out to help him film a video. And he was using a 7 c Mark II and I tried it out and I was like, no, this is really nice. The photographs that you can get from it are outstanding. Now, I'm not going to show my photos. I'm going to show you some of the pictures that Stu took 
just so you have an idea of how good quality photos you can get from this, which means it's absolutely great if you want to get your own reference. I mentioned that in the video that I, I or the reel that I did with him. It's like in the current world where as tattooists, everyone's using AI, Google and so on. It is nice to be able to go out and get your own footage or sorry, no footage and get your own photographs of your own reference. So yeah, testing this camera out for the last couple of weeks, I've got to say it was a very worthwhile investment for me getting this as an added part of my setup. It's compact enough that I can fit it in my bag, any bag that I've got. Obviously, I've got a bigger lens on it right now. But if I want to go to title conventions and do vlogging, happy days. You know, you've got so many various lens options, but it's compact. It fits in your bag. It's not that heavy. The battery life on it is very, very good. And the autofocus on it is outstanding compared to what I'm used to with the cameras that I currently use. And it works really well. I was like taking pictures of my mum's dog uh, in the kitchen uh, a couple of days ago. And it was doing eye autofocus. Like like this camera now, it picks up my eye and it has eye autofocus. And it was doing that with the dog and the pictures were absolutely great. I was able to take a picture of a fly sitting on a wall in my mum's garden. Just I was just like, you know, playing about trying it out and see what it was like. And the, the autofocus was picking it up. It was There was no issues with it at all. So I really think like for taking pictures of reference of flowers and birds and animals and so on, it will work really, really well. So another good thing about this camera is a really cool feature called auto framing. And the only way I can describe it is very similar to when I was using the DJI Osmo 3. And I was moving like this. And the camera was kind of keeping me in center. Like obviously right now, I'm, it, it ain't happening because I'm not using that. But when I was using it with the A7C Mark II and I was doing some test footage or even when I've been filming stuff and I've had that feature on, what I've noticed is I can sit there, I can talk to you guys, do my reviews, do my videos. And when I've got that feature on, I'm always in the center of the shot. It crops in slightly, but then it follows you. So if you are somebody that is like a one-man band, like sometimes me and Paul are when we film our own content, having a feature like that works really, really well. And with the, with the whole AI kind of features that they have on this camera, that is what enables you to essentially be able to do all those awesome continuous tracking shots of animals and insects and birds and cars and trains and planes and everything. So... You know, it really is packed full of a load of really good features. And it, I, I can't really say anything negative about this. Yes, I am a Sony fanboy. We and Paul joke about it all the time. But I truly think that Sony make amazing cameras. Otherwise, I wouldn't have three of their cameras. And they get used daily and they, they are really, really good. Okay, so just taking a quick look at the camera, you know, you've got some cool little features on there. So you've got S&Q, which is a built-in slow-mo and time-lapse feature. You've got your movie mode and you've also got your photography or your photograph mode. Um, but what I find really cool with the customization of the buttons is I'm able to flick it over to the mode with the video, which is what I use mostly. And then I can change the shutter to the record button and that frees up this button there where I can use that for something else. So if I want like easy access to white balance, I can just press that and adjust it. Or I, if I, what I've done with this is because it's a full frame sensor, I've set it where if I press the record button, it instantly crops in, gives you that uh, APS-C or Super 35 framing. This one only has one SD card slot on it. So if you're looking to use it for professional purposes and you don't, and you, 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 where you need to have a backup option, you're not going to have that with this. Um, but in all the time that I've been filming, I've never had issues. Touch wood, I don't, but I've never had issues with SD cards failing and so on. You've got the hot shoe on the top and the really good thing about the hot shoe is if you pair that with the Sony mics, then you don't need to have you know, a road mic on the top, for example, where the wire is coming in. You can just plug the mic in and it is all plug and play. Okay, so I'm using the microphone, the Sony one that I was just talking about on the video and it's got noise, noise cancelling and everything like that. But what I love about it is it is literally plug and play. There's no extra cables. There's no fanning around. But the audio that you get from it is pretty damn good, considering you don't have to do anything. Uh, and the great thing about this as well is if you bang it through a Dove podcast, it makes it sound even better. So 
there we go back to me talking to you to be honest with you, if you want to go into like a full in-depth video about like all the specs of the camera you're better off checking out the camera center uk the camera center uk youtube channel because um stuart does go into more detail about this camera this is just me saying look tattooists if you want to get a camera that is going to be able to take really good pictures and do good video and be a really good camera for content creators then this is definitely a really good option for you um in my opinion anyway so yeah it, it's like i said it, it's it's really good so far like another really cool thing i like about this is you can pair it up with their creators app so a lot of the time in the past one thing that's prevented me from wanting to use cameras to take pictures is i have to take the sd card out you know plug it into the computer download the picture blah 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 but what i found with the new sony creators app is it is so much easier to connect your app to the phone so you can just like take a picture of your tattoo at the end of the day with a really good camera bang it from your f camera straight to your phone and then straight up on the instagram don't have to do any editing if you don't want to so i know some people like to edit their pictures but it kind of allows you to be kind of streamlined and just really quickly get that footage from that camera all the photos from that camera onto your phone and straight onto instagram now, pricing of this camera, I'm looking at the Camera Center UK website. Brand new is £1,999. And that doesn't include the lens. That is the body only. Because one good thing I will say about my friends down in Camera Center UK, they, they also have uh, refurbished ones. Like, this isn't a brand new one. This is a refurbished one. So, you could be paying for an A7C Mark II full-frame camera with a 28 to 60 millimeter lens. Uh, 1899 pounds now let's just put this into perspective the camera that i'm filming on now cost me 3800 pound i think and i'm pretty sure that the cat one of the other cameras that we used to film the podcast is about six to seven grand or six grand or something like that so it's in the realm of good good quality cameras this is definitely affordable and they're going to last a really long time as well i've had my cameras for ages and i plan to have them and use them until they just end up breaking or until something really cool comes along so i like gadgets so yeah the sony a7c mark ii it gets a massive thumbs up from me it has been my camera that i use on a day-to-day -day basis now i use it more than my a7s3 I've been filming all my YouTube videos with it lately, obviously to test it. We use it to film the podcast, so it films for ages. We, you know, it, it, it definitely meets up to what I needed to do. So as a run and gun content creation, content creation camera, this is definitely something that is, it, it will work. So it's a great hybrid camera for people to use in the title industry to up their game and, you know, get their reels looking good make all their own reference and get cool pictures of their tattoos and vlog and shit so yeah massive thumbs up definitely worth a look at if you got if you are going to get one phone camera sent to uk tell them chris the tattooist told you to come down and hopefully they'll sort you out with a bit of a discount they usually do you know or they'll chuck something in but just tell them i sent you and they'll sort you out so catch you later are you a tattooist? Okay. Is scooping too much for you? That's Do you great. struggle scooping the glide? Scoop every last drop. Do you drink every last drop of life? Do you want all of your tattoo glide? You need a glide drink. spoon. <laughs> The Tattoo Show is made possible in part with the help of all of our friends. So thank you to Rob from Electrum, to Perry from Total Tattoo Magazine, and to our growing band of executive producers, the Purple Handy Preachers. We can't do this without you, and we appreciate every single one of you. So on behalf of myself and Chris, thank you all sincerely for your help. We really do appreciate it.